Hi everyone, it's Justina here from House of Mahalo. Welcome, welcome um, to another book flip through. Now I have two candles today because my strawberry one is still hanging in there. It is still going but it does look like it's really down to just the wick now. So I have this one and then just for good measure I've got the rosemary. So uh, yes, right now my room smells like strawberries and rosemary which is an interesting mix but actually really quite pleasant. Okay, so I'm here to do a flip through of this beautiful book, The Secret Garden by F. Hodgson, Hodgson Burnett. Um, that is who wrote the story, the original story. And this edition is illustrated by Inga Moore. So I've got this book, as you might have guessed, for my secret garden project, no surprises there. Um, and I thought I would give you a flip through um, so you can see the beautiful illustrations and we can just have a little bit of a chat. So this version is a paperback. Um, I actually thought I was getting a hardback version that would be, you know, yay big. Um, and then this came, but I didn't mind because once again it was only a couple of pounds. It wasn't expensive at all. Um, okay, so I'm just going to read you the blurb. I'm sure many of you know the story of The Secret Garden. Let me just... Um, Move that, there we go. Um, but for those of you who don't, when newly orphaned Mary Lennox arrives from India, everyone at Misselthwaite Manor thinks her a most disagreeable child. Then one day she finds a garden that has mysteriously been kept locked and hidden for 10 years, and with the help of Dickon and her spoiled invalid cousin Colin, brings the secret garden back to life. First published in 1911, the Secret Garden is one of the greatest children's books of the 20th century. Um, I will also read you the blurb from Inga Moore. So this is who has illustrated this edition. She says, The Secret Garden is one of the greatest books for children of all time, and it took me a long while to pluck up the courage to illustrate it. What made me think I could do it justice? I knew a merely decorative approach wouldn't do for a work with such depth of meaning. There you are, that's the... Uh strawberry candle going just going to put the lid on before it smokes up the room so i decided to bring out as much of its meaning as i could in my pictures carefully placing them next to the words they illustrated in the hope that the two together would make a more vivid whole i drew a great number of pictures it is a very long book and by the time i came close to the end i was very tired but i was never tired of francis hodgson burnett's wonderful story I read some passages over and over again, and every time I found something new, something I had not seen before. I can't believe she would say that she couldn't do, she didn't think she could do the story justice. I mean, you'll see from the illustrations shortly that she was, yes, <laughs> really needed more self-belief because she really did bring to the story. So, as I say, this is a paperback, and to be fair, before I show you the flip through, I just want to mention... This edition actually gave me some ideas of another project that we can do as part of the Secret Garden theme, which is on the front and back of this cover, the cover flips out like this, can you see? And I thought straight away it could be like a flip flap folio, just the same thing on this side. Um, and the spine I think is about an inch. So, you know, once I dismantle the book, after I've read it of course, um, I think the, the cover itself would actually be a really good base for a folio. Um, you know, much like I would do an altered file folder, but using this instead. And I probably will keep much of how the cover looks with all of the illustrations. Um, I just might cover up, you know, like this section. Or we could cut that down, we could have a tuck there. Yes. <laughs> I, I just wanted to mention because um, you can get inspiration from everywhere and... I always find it interesting to hear where people get inspiration from uh, and all of that. So, that was a Christmas present. Oh, from someone's grandma. It's sad, isn't it? I always find it sad when I see inscriptions in books because I just think, oh, someone didn't, someone didn't keep it, the book. Right, well, straight away, we have the beautiful Robin. The Robin who showed the way. And we've got all of these little images, which will be lovely as little like embellishments. You know, I have to cut these out. Maybe have them on snippets and clusters and things. And lovely fussy cuts as well. 
So I liked the size of this book by the time I did get it um, because some of the pages are full, um, full illustration and some of them are smaller so they would make nice uh, journal cards. <laughs> yes, I forgot the candle was there. <laughs> Um, the pages are all stitched in, which is amazing, so I can take out full double spreads. And the pages are nice and thick, so I will probably use many of the book pages in my journals, um, and then just either keep the story or cover up the text if I, you know, if I want to bring in pockets and, and decoupaging and things like that. Nice side tuck, just there. So that's, um, that's a good thought, uh, what I need to bring into the Secret Garden project. Luggage and suitcase brown leather to go with the terracotta that I'll have in the project. So I won't talk too much about the project itself because I have, <laughs> I have done quite a few videos now um, that you'll see. And I don't want to sound like a broken record, but I'm just so excited for it. So yeah, once again, we can have these as side tucks and journal cards and belly bands and things so there's yeah this edition gives us lots and lots of room for how we will how we will use it so i'm really really excited i know i keep saying that but i really am and then you get lovely lovely i mean just as soon as i hit the nature scenery scenic images i just oh, i just love it it was interesting actually, my husband and I were talking this morning about spirituality and beliefs and things and you know we were curious as to, I mean I'm sure we've had the discussions many times in the past and to be honest I don't even know how we got onto the, the subject, um, but we got to talking and um, I was mentioning about how I feel like nature heals me, um, so I believe in many many things <laughs> and one of the things that I believe in is with regards to the elements of nature so earth air fire water and I do believe that each one of those can be you can be drawn to specific ones not just singular it could be multiple and you get your strength and power and happiness and everything from that and the reason I believe in that myself is because I'm at my happiest and my most Inner calm comes from being out in woodlands, actually. Uh, woodlands and forests and where I can see a lot of trees. So I'm very blessed that I've got lots of trees outside my window that I can look at, um, that the council have, have planted. They're not, they're not in our garden, unfortunately, but they're right there. Um, and obviously walking my dog every morning gives me a chance to be out in the trees every single morning. Not in the trees, near the trees. Um, so yeah, I just, I don't know why we got to talking about all of that, but, um, but we did. Nice pencil drawings of the butterflies here. So I do have some other secret garden books that I will show you as well, um, which we'll, we'll do on another separate video. Here she is, talking to the robin. And when it comes to my project, I know I said I wasn't going to talk about it, but I'm going to, um, I will be bringing in elements from the story. So, you know, the robin and the key for the gate. And I want to bring in all of the colours that you would expect from a secret garden. But I also want to bring in um, colours like wood and terracotta. So we can see here we've got the terracotta plant pots. We've got the wood from the gate or the wheelbarrows or the um, uh, gardening tools, that kind of a thing. But yes, I just I just love the I love how the images are different through the book. So there there are different ways to use them. You know, full journal cards, side tucks, everything. I feel like it gives us a lot of opportunity for what we want to make. And you know, then you get these full images, which I would probably take out as a page. Um, so if you were to fold it into your signature. That would be okay and that would fit a book I think. Um, I'm actually going to just check how tall it is because I want to know how much I'd cut down. Oh there you go look it's eight and a quarter inches high uh, by about seven inches so once you fold a page in half you would only need to lose 
maybe like, yeah, a quarter, well, yeah, maybe nothing, or maybe just like a quarter of an inch, not much at all. To get about eight inches high, I think, would be, would be about right. For a, an average sized journal and um, altered file folders. Isn't that beautiful? And the deer in the background and the trees. <laughs> so yeah. Oh, the little seed packets. Again, these can be little like elements or I could put that into a cluster. I just love the opportunity to be able to use books like this in our journals. I know a few people have um, worries about using books or like um, they enjoy using them for journals and they see the, you know, the the, the, the want to, to do it. But I know that a few people have issues with tearing up books, you know, from feeling guilty about it or, or what have you. I believe that's Dickon. He looks a little bit like the Pied Piper there. He's um, playing a flute and all the animals are coming running. <laughs> but, um, oh, the holly. Yes, yeah, so about uh, cutting up books. I personally stopped feeling guilty when I found out how many books actually get um, discarded and incinerated per year. It's something in the tens of thousands just in the UK alone. That's not across the world, that is just in the UK. I can't remember whether it was something like 80 or 100,000 books per year. That's a lot of books that we are. We've cut down the trees to make the books and we're just burning them? Like, that doesn't sound right. And I, I, I appreciate we can't save every book out there, but you know, I also think that us as junk journalists, we have the opportunity to make a difference with regard to that number, even if it's just a tiny difference per person. The amount of people that love this hobby is growing by the day. And I just feel like we all have an opportunity to use these books and give them a life again, give them a purpose again. You know, at the end of the day, someone received this as a Christmas present from their grandma and they haven't kept it. They didn't want to keep it. And to be quite frank, I'm not even convinced they read it because the spine isn't cracked or anything and it's in a pretty good condition considering this is, well, if she received it in 2010, then it's at least 12 years old. So I feel like, it, you know, all the pages are just clean and white, never been used, so not thumbed through. And that is such a shame because of the, the story itself and the illustrations in this edition. And yet, I have the opportunity now to come along and um, yeah, give give this a give this a purpose again. <laughs> what kind of animal is that? Is it like a little um, like a wood mouse, harvest mouse? Not sure. So I can't wait to read this book. Um, that's why I'm doing the flip through now, um, so that I can go off and read it. I'm planning to have this have this read in August so that I can start um, using some of the pages ready for my September start of the um, making some ephemera for the project. Um, but I want to read the story first. Um, I remember reading it many many years ago, I think I must have been in primary school. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just going off on a tangent again, little rabbits and the bird's nest. So these are all animals I can bring in then into the project. Like I knew about the birds and the bees and the butterflies um, but this is interesting to think that she, she met an otter. <laughs> That's very interesting. Oh look at that. Would you look at that. That's just marvellous. I'm just looking at it thinking how can I use this and there's so many different ways. These at the top could be journal cards and then have these as little cluster images or little tucks or um, embellishments. But what I'm also looking at is if there would be some way to cover this section in the middle, because it's only a little bit of text, and have a belly band. And then you would almost have like a, a full page of image with some coordinating belly band across the the middle 
and I could do that perhaps in a file folder because of the size of it I wouldn't have to fold the pages in half the imagination that we have the opportunity to go to isn't it it's just how can you not look at something like this and not feel incredibly inspired and I get emotional about it because I just feel like we are so incredibly blessed to to be able to use this and to appreciate it. And I almost want to get a second copy of the book <laughs> because I think I'm going to keep wanting to look at these images. This is interesting. I was just thinking it's another sort of side tuck image. And what you could do is then cut around the flowers just here. So it's a side tuck at the top and then the flowers kind of fan out at the bottom. That would be really pretty on a page, I think. I feel like I was talking about something before getting excited about <laughs> the pages. And unfortunately, I can't remember what it was. So there's lots of text pages in here as well, which I don't mind. Um, I imagine I would use them in ephemera. They, they're nice and strong pages, so they would make really nice book page pockets and I could decoupage over the top to make pages or tags and journal cards or tucks and pockets and things. So I'm not worried so much about that, but I do feel like it's a thick book and so there's plenty here for me to work with, definitely. <laughs> Oh, the little rabbits are sleeping. Lovely. Oh, I've just read that. I just, I, I noticed she was naming some of the flowers. When the summer comes, there will be curtains and fountains of roses. I think the ground is full of daffodils and snowdrops and lilies and iris working their way out of the dark. Now the spring has sprung has begun. Beautiful. Perhaps they are coming up through the grass. Perhaps there are clusters of purple crocuses and gold ones even now. Perhaps the leaves are beginning to break out and uncurl and perhaps the grey is changing and a green gauze veil is creeping and creeping over everything. And the birds are coming to look at it because it's so safe and still. And perhaps, perhaps the robin has found a mate and is building a nest. How lovely is that? I really cannot remember the story, like I remember the outline of the story but I can't remember the words that she used and my goodness that is the most extraordinary description of something that I've read in a long time. So yes I'm going to really enjoy reading this basically as well as using it. She meets a horse, beautiful. So yeah, lots of ways to use this book and I really, really like the images, definitely, especially the ones that are, you know, scenic and of the garden. And as I say, just the variety. <laughs> really pretty. And I love just the small images as well, you know, just for how I might be able to use them. So I hope you're enjoying seeing these beautiful images. I'm trying not to dawdle too much, but still give you a chance to look at everything. Oh, look at that. Are those goldfinches? I think they are. I'm just looking to see if she um, mentions them. Not on that page. I think they are goldfinches. I could be wrong. <laughs> I'm not... I'm not completely au fait with birds, but I want to say they are goldfinches in the trees. It's lovely. And look at that. Even just looking at the images of trees just makes me feel at home and myself. Beautiful. Once again, that's a full page image. Oh gosh, no, look at that. <laughs> I was just going to say you could... Yeah, that would still be a lovely image of itself. And then look on the back, it's like collaging like the cover. It's all just, all these scenery and another, just, ah, oh, just magic. And the fox, and the 
squirrel, squirrels riding in the uh, wheelchair. That's lovely. Isn't it nice? So what do you think? Would you would you have a book like this? Have you read The Secret Garden Story? I'd love to know. Oh, look at that. I think this is really where the, the story coming is coming to life now. I think this is where they're, they're obviously introducing her cousin to the garden. And I feel like that's where we really get, oh, blossom and blue tits. Crocuses. Let's move more blue tits. Just wonderful. Such a lovely story. So yeah, I'd love to know if you have read the book. As I mentioned, I think I read it when I was in primary school, so you know, under 10. Lovely side tuck image there with the squirrels in the trees and them eating their tea and cake. Um, but I'd love to know if you've read it and, and what you think of the story and, and all of that. <laughs> Watering the flowers. Nice little squirrels. See little fussy cats, maybe. Depends on what's on the other side. Oh yeah. Nothing nothing there apart from these cute little foxes. Isn't that gorgeous? Again, this could be a little tag journaling card. Some fussy cats. And then look at that. Don't you just want to be walking where she is? <laughs> Stunning. I don't know how Inga Moore could possibly say she couldn't do the story justice because I feel like she really has. I feel like I want to frame some of these. So yes, I think I will have to get another book so that I can just, yeah, look at these images always because I love them so much. These are lovely. <laughs> the owls. That's a mole, right? Little mole. These would be lovely as well. And then all of these are woodpecker, swans, badgers. Just to all have these cut out perhaps or even just leave it as it is in the journal. Goodness, I am so excited for this project. I mean, I, I have looked at this book obviously once it first arrived. Um, but um, yeah, <laughs> I've got a renewed sense of just wanting to crack on now and I'm so glad that I get a chance to share this with you I'm so glad I really love doing these videos I just feel like that's pretty it's like it's the text of the book page but can you see it's it's got the flowers like faded flowers in the background almost like decoupage like what decoupage would look like maybe you know obviously a little bit fainter but that's very pretty and the robin oh he found his mate <laughs> yes uh, yes as i say i'm so i'm so i'm so grateful that i get to share this with you and that you enjoy watching it's a wonderful time i feel like i can really be myself um which is strange because I feel like myself when I've got the camera on, but I think it's just, you know, I can just gush about what's in front of me. Um, whereas if I'm working on something, I'm often quite um, quite focused on what I'm doing. But I, I, I want to relax more going forward, definitely. It's something that I really want to, to do. And to just, yeah, be myself. Um, I think you can often struggle sometimes with... Um, you see the ebbs and flows of videos doing well and other videos not doing so well and it can it can mess with your head a little bit but uh, I'm trying not to let that happen because I am me and I am not going to apologize for that I I like myself <laughs> so that is that is the thing these are lovely trees just make me think of um, winter, I think, because they're, they're the pines and firs, aren't they? Another element to bring out of the story, oh gosh, lovely, is uh, letters. 
because obviously she discovers, um, well, if you, well, you might not, obviously, you might not know. Um, she discovers that her mum did actually love her in store, uh, letters that um, the mum exchanged with a friend. It's very pretty. Oh, look at that. Now, how is that for a journal page? Two journal pages. Loads of room to write. So what I would do then is I would take this whole page and have it as a journal page. So it would be folded in half, perhaps. And then you would have space to write all around the image. I wouldn't feel the need to cover that up. You could easily, you know, you could write song lyrics or little notes and things. And then on the back, there's space to write here. And I would probably just collage over the, the words, perhaps, or just put um, another fussy cut or something likewise on that side and then this one I would just cover 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 this and have all of that as writing space obviously you know folded in half 2009 this edition is from but Inga Moore did the illustrations in 2007 so you know getting on quite a bit now obviously the story is from the early 1900s. Beautiful. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to using the cover as well. That's a really nice green. Gosh, inspiration abounds on this one. I'm actually really, really glad that I got the, the paperback now because if it had come as a hardback, obviously I could have turned that into a folio or a journal or something, but I imagine it would have been bigger and um, I think that probably would have been a little bit trickier to fill as a journal. Whereas this, with the flips already in place, I just see it already of just what else can I add to this to make it into a folio. Whilst using the beautiful illustrations from Inga Moore uh, in my journals. So I'm so sorry that was video was a little bit long. Actually, no, I'm not going to apologise because I had a wonderful time and I hope you did as well. Um, but yeah, that did, that video did last a little bit longer than I expected, but I think just, it's quite a, a chunky book. Um, I'm just going to see how many pages. There you are. It's, it's nearly 320 pages and, uh, there was lots to look at. So the video took that amount of time and that's okay. So I hope you've enjoyed having a look at that with me and, um, I wish I could have you smell the rosemary candle because that's actually really, really nice. Um, it feels very, um, yeah. It's not like a rosemary when you're cooking dinner, like if you put rosemary on a chicken. It doesn't smell like that. It's more of a, um, like if you, if you were walking through a kitchen garden and somebody had planted rosemary, that's the smell that you would smell in amongst all of the, um, you know, the nature and stuff, but you'd get that that hint of rosemary it smells a little bit like that so yeah anyway enough about candles Justine um so yeah I hope you've enjoyed seeing that as I mentioned I do have a couple of other books that I've bought for my secret garden project which I'll do as a separate book flip through and I will put that up next weekend with the rosemary candle probably still so thank you ever so much everyone thanks for joining me I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you feel relaxed on this here Saturday and I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. We'll speak soon. Bye bye for now.